TGIF. This is a popular phrase among the secular Monday to Friday business world. It means, thank God it's Friday. Or for those who don't want to thank God, thank goodness it's Friday. See, their work week is coming to a close, and they can now look forward to the weekend where they can fill every waking moment with either pursuing leisurely pleasures or more work, like the unpaid labor around the house. There's even a restaurant chain in the United States that's taken this phrase, and they're using it as their name. It suggests that the weekend is for partying, and at their restaurant, it's always the weekend. But most of the time, I prefer TGIS. Thank God it's Sunday. Because that means that we can gather for worship, for thanksgiving, and praise to the God of creation, the God of our salvation, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But remember, Sunday is not the only day we are called to give praise and thanks to God. Did you know that giving thanks and praise is a major theme in the Bible? Did you also know that the words, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, appear eight times in the Old Testament. Give thanks to God appears six times in the New Testament. Just the words, give thanks, appears over 140 times in the entire Bible. And the word praise appears 204 times in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And since giving thanks and praise are so similar in their actions, that means that they appear as verbs or action words over 344 times in the Bible. That means that it's the most mentioned activity that human beings are called to engage in as a response to God and His goodness. Although giving thanks and praise to God are the most mentioned verbs for us to engage in, the most often mentioned verb or action in the Bible is love. Either God's love for us, our love for God, or our love for one another. That word appears 538 times in the NRSV. But again, the number one activity we humans are to exclusively engage in, according to this word count, is to offer thanksgiving to God and one another and praise alone to God. As Christians, giving thanks and praise to God is our primary calling in all we do and for all we have. And as I've mentioned before, I believe we do that not just with our words, but also by how we live. We are called to give thanks and praise to God for keeping us in relationship with Him. We give thanks and praise to God for giving us His Son to be our deliverer by dying on the cross for our sin and for raising Him to new life in order to give us the gift of eternal life. We have faith in the promises made to us at our baptism. But so often... In this fast-paced, get-ahead-at-all-costs worlds that we live in, giving thanks and praise to someone other than ourselves is often difficult, and so is left only for special occasions or momentous events, rather than for everything that happens around, for, and to us. Now, most people will celebrate today or tomorrow without... Uh, giving a moment's thought to its significance, except it's Turkey Day. Now there's an old High and Lois comic where the family has gathered around the Thanksgiving table where Ditto, the youngest son, asks, why do we always have turkey on Thanksgiving? So Lois, the mom, hesitantly answers, well, because it's a tradition. And so Ditto says, What's a tradition? And Chip, the older brother, interrupts to say, something we've been doing so long, we don't even remember why. Although it's just a comic strip, 
But the danger we face in our ever-increasing secular society is that as a society, we will soon forget what Thanksgiving is all about and where the traditions really come from. So that's why I believe it's so important for us in the church to hold on to our traditions without getting locked into them. And we need to have special Thanksgiving services so that we don't forget who we are thankful to and so that we can continue to be a place that gives witness to our God and His goodness. We need to continue to be thankful in all things. Now there's a story about a church Thanksgiving party that says that the evening ended with a time for each participant to say what he or she was especially thankful for that year. You know, maybe you've even been to an event like this or you carry on this tradition among your, your own family meals around the turkey table. But according to this story, many of the usual blessings were mentioned like family and friends, wealth and health. But at the end, a small, tiny young girl said, Oh, I'm just thankful that I'm thankful. Now that seems like a particularly healthy emotion to me. We can be thankful that we are thankful. Because being thankful reminds us of all the things that we can be thankful for. For one thing, when we are thankful, we become more aware of those in our lives that we owe our very lives to. In 1914, English poet Lawrence Binion wrote a poem about the dead of World War I. He wrote these now famous words, words that we will hear again at our November Remembrance Day service. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Well, I'm personally thankful that the church council has given me permission to take some of my holidays in early April of 2017 so that I can travel to Vimy Ridge in France to help commemorate the 100th anniversary of the battle that many believe shaped Canada into the nation that it is. Now, although Binion's poem was written near the beginning of World War I and the Battle of Vimy Ridge came closer to the end of the war, Binion's words still apply to them and to all who died in any war. See, I believe that there are also a lot of other people who have made sacrifices so that we can live in this free and prosperous land in this great country of Canada. Now, Binion wrote about the soldiers But we also have others to thank for their many sacrifices, like our parents, our grandparents, the farmers, factory workers, office workers, and bosses. I'm talking about people who worked hard all their lives without much to show for it except the dream that someday we, their children, would live a much better life than they did. When we are thankful, We also acknowledge that we have responsibilities. But these responsibilities are not to our ancestors, but to our descendants. Now there's an old Amish saying that suggests that we do not inherit the land from our fathers, we are borrowing it from our children. Now with all the debates and theories on greenhouse gases and global warming, I believe Thanksgiving is a good time for us to reflect on our stewardship of this good land that the Lord is giving us and our responsibilities to those who come after us. Now with the recycling of papers, the old battery collection, the use of email instead of postal mailings, and the other attempts to green the church, (coughs) excuse me, these are wonderful steps in the right direction but it will still take a concerted effort on all our parts if there is going to be a good land left to give to our children and our grandchildren. So when we are thankful, we acknowledge both our indebtedness to those who came before us and our responsibility to those who will come after us. And when we are truly thankful, 
we are also affirming our faith in God. See, we are a blessed people. That's why we need to listen carefully to the words of the writer of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10. Bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to be thankful. And I'm thankful that you are here today to show and express your thankfulness. But in our gospel lesson, we discover that nine of the lepers failed to acknowledge God or publicly thank him for their healing and a restored relationship with family and friends. Now, since we, we don't know what their response is to the healing, we are left to assume that they took it for granted because only one in ten recognized this gift and returned to give thanks and praise. Now, as you were coming to church this morning, I bet that you were one of ten of your neighbors who were taking the time to come to church to give thanks and praise to God for his goodness. Where are your nine neighbors? Are they living like the nine lepers, taking God's gifts for granted, or maybe not acknowledging them at all? But before we get a swelled head, notice that the one leper didn't brag about his thankfulness. Instead, he simply threw himself at the feet of the master and gave thanks. Just like we don't know how the nine responded, we may not know what our neighbor's thoughts are about giving thanks. So we are not to judge them. We are simply to live our own lives in thankfulness. And when the opportunity presents itself, mention to them in both word and deed who we are thankful to and why. So as thankful Christians, we can help them see all the goodness that's around us, the goodness that comes from God. And then we can invite them to come to give thanks to. <coughs> as we continue to worship, as we continue to give thanks and praise to God today, it's my hope and prayer that the thankfulness you feel in your hearts at this moment will carry on for the rest of the service. And as you go from this place, may you seek out and take every opportunity to mention why you are thankful and to whom you are thankful. So give thanks to God, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.